Hello! From Wonder Media Network, I'm Jenny Kaplan, and this is Womanica. This month, we're talking about women of sound. These women dominated the airwaves, innovating, documenting, and creating the audio landscape we live in today. Today, we're talking about a prolific jazz pianist, composer, and band leader. Combining jazz techniques with traditional Japanese instruments, she created music that was uniquely her own. Please meet Toshiko Akiyoshi. Toshiko was born in 1929 in the region of Manchuria, which is now part of northeastern China. She started playing piano when she was seven years old, receiving formal lessons in classical piano. But she almost had to give it all up. After World War II ended in 1945, almost all of the Japanese people living in Manchuria had to return to Japan. Toshiko's family lost all of their assets in the move. Toshiko no longer had access to a piano. Eager to tickle the ivories once more, Toshiko looked for other opportunities to play. One day, she stumbled upon an advertisement that said, Pianist Wanted. America's occupation of Japan was underway, meaning there was an influx of American soldiers. Those soldiers wanted entertainment in their off time, places to dance and listen to music. So Toshiko got a job playing the piano in a dance hall. A few months into playing at dance halls, a jazz collector came up to Toshiko and told her she had the talent to become a jazz player. Jazz wasn't something she'd considered before, but she went home and listened to a Teddy Wilson record and immediately fell in love with the genre. Toshiko bought a hi-fi phonograph on a monthly payment plan, but records were only available on the black market, so she visited jazz cafes to get her fix. She listened to every jazz record she could get her hands on and tried to copy what she heard. Toshiko then moved to Tokyo, where she dove further into the jazz world. In 1953, Canadian jazz virtuoso Oscar Peterson heard her play at a concert. He was so amazed by what he heard that he demanded that his label record her. The success of that album led Toshiko to enroll at the prestigious Berklee School of Music in Boston. She was the first Japanese musician at the school. In 1959, she graduated, and she married a saxophonist named Charlie Mariano. The pair moved to New York City and started a quartet. They didn't always have an easy go of it. People underestimated Toshiko due to her race and gender. In 1963, Toshiko gave birth to a daughter and decided to move to Japan. She couldn't go on the same long concert tour as she used to, but she arranged, composed, and practiced. After two years, she moved back to the United States and divorced her husband. By the 1970s, Toshiko had married saxophonist Lou Tabakin and moved to Los Angeles. She felt her career stagnating and decided to retire from music. But retirement didn't last long. Lou convinced Toshiko to start a jazz orchestra. Previously, Toshiko played solo or in small bands. But when she was composing and arranging her songs for a wider range of instruments, she discovered a new depth to her music and a renewed zeal for performing. Toshiko wanted to record another album. She sent a set of scores to her friend, who was a music producer. The producer later told a reporter that the scores came with a message. These are totally different from previous jazz music. Don't be surprised. He was in awe of the uniqueness of her work, which incorporated a woodwind section as well as traditional Japanese instruments. In 1974, the Toshiko Akiyoshi Lu Tabakin Big Band released their first record entitled Kogun. It was a hit. Music was a form of self-expression for Toshiko. The title track of Kogun is about the Japanese soldier Hiro Onoda, who lived in the jungles of the Philippines for 30 years, not knowing World War II had ended. Her song Minamata is based on Minamata disease, an effect of mercury poisoning that was first reported in Japan. In 1999, Toshiko became the first Japanese person inducted into the International Jazz Hall of Fame. In 2003, the Toshiko Akiyoshi Lu Tabakin Big Band disbanded. After three decades working primarily as a composer and band leader, Toshiko wanted to return to her roots and play the piano. Toshiko hasn't stopped performing. She says as long as her body can move smoothly, she'll continue to take the stage. When asked whether or not she had anything left to achieve, Toshiko said, My progress stops when I think I have done everything or I give up. 
So my life is and will continue to be full of things left unfinished until the bitter end. All month, we're talking about women of sound. For more information, find us on Facebook and Instagram at Womanica Podcast. Special thanks to Liz Kaplan, my favorite sister and co-creator. As always, we're taking a break for the weekend. Talk to you on Monday.